What is up, Packer fans? Welcome back to the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Before I jump in today, I just want to do a brief little tease. I have some pretty epic major announcements coming up regarding the Pack a Day podcast. I will likely announce that on Twitter first, and I will probably have an update right here for you tomorrow. So make sure to stay tuned for that. And of course, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, because It is going to be pretty darn exciting, so keep an eye out for that. Cannot wait, but enough about that. We've got some news and notes to go over, as well as some bold predictions. Who doesn't love some spicy, bold predictions before the start of the season? So we'll get there momentarily, but first... Packers did have some tryouts, nothing too major, you know, nothing noteworthy to, you know, per se, but uh, Keyshawn Johnson, the wide receiver did try out for the Packers, not that Keyshawn Johnson, but the newest Keyshawn Johnson wide receiver, Uh, Kevin Aikens, Daryl Baker, and then the one that I love the most, Elijah Griffin. If you're not familiar with Elijah Griffin, he is the son of rapper Warren G. And what better player to make a Green Bay Packer and carry the G than the son of Warren? G, Elijah Griffin. So uh, no transactions of note based off of those tryouts, but would love to see Warren G's son get a shot on the practice squad with the Packers. I actually liked him as a corner coming out as well. So uh, that is a fun one to keep an eye on. In other not so fun news and notes, uh, Kirk Benkert, the former Packer fan favorite quarterback for the Packers, the number three quarterback, uh, worked out for the Chicago Bears. So uh, not exactly, you know, something that you want to see with Kirk Benkert, not from a threat standpoint. I don't think anyone's super concerned about Kirk Benkert going to Chicago, beating out Justin Fields, and then beating up on the Packers every year. Uh, But he's just one of those, you know, sort of fan favorite cult heroes in Green Bay, and you never want to see them have to put on a Chicago Bears uniform. But of course, I'm sure everyone is cheering for Kirk uh, to do well and land back on his feet. So if he gets an NFL job, that would be great for him as well. So not necessarily cheering against him there, but uh, again, you wish you could find a team that didn't involve Chicago, Minnesota, or Detroit if you are a Kirk Benkert fan. But he worked out the obviously the Luke Getze uh, connection there, former Packers quarterback coach, familiar with him. So we'll see if anything comes of that, but just a workout at this point. In addition, the Packers did release their unofficial depth chart as well. Nothing too noteworthy here either. I'll go over the few things that did catch my eye. The first is the starting offensive line, the exact one that I said yesterday if everyone was healthy. Uh, David Bakhtiari at left tackle, John Runyon Jr. at left guard, Josh Myers at center, Royce Newman at right guard, and Elton Jenkins at right tackle. I know a lot of people aren't going to be super happy that Royce Newman is maybe that starting right guard when everyone's healthy, uh, but I I just do think that that's the way that they're going to start out. I do think Jake Hansen and Zach Tom will get their name in that conversation maybe before the season's done if Newman doesn't play up to expectations, but fully expect Newman to be the starting right guard if and when the Packers can actually get everyone back healthy at the same time. One of the weird, interesting ones that I did not see coming, they have Keyshawn Nixon listed as the number two kick returner, which, okay, I guess. I don't know why per se, but uh, he's listed as the number two kick returner. Uh, they had uh, they had Jonathan Garvin and Kingsley JJ and Igbare ahead of Tipa Naliai at the edge rusher position. So it was Gary and Preston as the starters, then Garvin and Enigbare as the three and four, and then on the next line was Tipa. So yeah, it sounds like Tipa may actually be the number five edge rusher, which was slightly surprising. I would have uh, guessed that he was at least um, maybe ahead of Garvin, but they have Garvin and Enigbare ahead of Tipa. And then they did have Dallin Levitt and uh, Rudy Ford ahead of Tariq Carpenter. Yes, I am aware it is Tariq Carpenter. I know I called him Tariq Campbell yesterday. I'm sorry. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I usually record this at about, right now it's 12.50 in the morning. Usually it's somewhere between like midnight and 1.30 a.m. And I do this usually without, I, I think there's only one or two episodes that I've ever made an edit to uh, in my life. So it's one cut, no edits. The fact that I'm not calling everyone by the wrong name at this hour is uh, a small minor miracle in and of itself. So yes, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but ever since Tariq Carpenter's been drafted, I've had Tariq Campbell in my head. I don't know why. I can't get it out. It's happened before. Now it's probably going to happen again, but hopefully it doesn't and I can get Tariq Carpenter stuck in my head from now until the end of time. So yes, but Dallin Levitt, Rudy Ford ahead of Tariq Carpenter on the safety list. So those are the only takeaways that I had. I think everything else was exactly as expected, but You can go check that out over on Packers.com. Please remember it is an unofficial depth chart, so it doesn't really mean a whole heck of a lot, but interesting to take a look at it nonetheless. 
All right, let's get to our main event for the day. And these are my 12 bold, spicy predictions for the upcoming season. I did these a year ago as well. Um, let's see if I actually have them up here. I might not still, but uh, yeah, no, I don't, unfortunately. Um, but I did them a year ago and I know I had, uh, you know, Nathaniel Hackett was one of the ones that I said he would be a head coach uh, the next season. That was one of the few I got right. Um, I think I had the Packers winning every game in the division. I think they, they clearly lost to the Vikings in Minnesota, so I know that wasn't true. Um, there were a couple I got right, a couple I got wrong, but uh, those are up on Packer Report if you want to check up, uh, check on last year's bold predictions. But let's do this year's 12 bold predictions for the upcoming season. Number one, I am going to speak into existence. I'm most nervous about week one, and I'm hopeful then after that it's going to be good to go. But my first bold prediction, David Bakhtiari will start in every single game for the Packers this season. As mentioned, I'm most worried about Packers Vikings. Maybe they just give him an extra week and don't play him on that turf in Minnesota. That's probably actually what I would do if I were Green Bay. Uh, but assuming he plays this week, which Bakhtiari said that he's expecting to play and, on, and, and trending to play uh, week one, I think he is going to make it through the season without any issues. And I think he will start every single game for the Packers this season. So that's that is probably my boldest, spiciest take. Um, like I said, it's not like I'm a doctor. It's not like I have his medical records. It's not like I can predict the future. If so, I would be doing this in Vegas and not here on YouTube. But I'm going to say David Bakhtiari starts every game for the Packers. Number two, Green Bay special teams finishes in the 20s and fans everywhere rejoice in the streets with parades and uh, hand uh, Rich Passaccia the keys to the city. I don't know if it's going to be number 20 overall. I don't know if it's going to be number 29 overall, but it's going to be somewhere between 20 and 29, which most importantly means it's not 30, not 31, or most importantly, not 32. And that's all that matters. Like I said, if they can just be, just be below average, doesn't have to be great, doesn't have to be good, doesn't have to be average. It can be below average. It can just not be awful and it will feel like a major step for the special team. So I think they're going to finish somewhere around 25th, but I will give myself a little leeway here and say they finish somewhere between 20th and 29th. Maybe that range isn't that bold of a take, but let's be honest. Anything outside of 32 for this Packers special teams still should feel like a bold take. So I'm going on a limb and saying somewhere between 20 and 29 for the final rankings for this Packers special teams this season. Number three, I'm going to redo my bold take from a season ago. And that is that Jordan Love will have his Aaron Rodgers Cowboys moment this season. So if you remember, I'm not talking about the, you know, throw to Jared Cook. I'm not talking about any other Aaron Rodgers Cowboys game. I'm talking about the one where he came in for an injured Brett Favre on Thursday night football. And for the first time, Packer fans got a glimpse of what he was really capable of in a regular season game. I'm going to say at some point this season, Rodgers has something where he cannot play either in a game or goes down early in a game. Don't think it's going to be anything major, but I think we get a glimpse of you know Jordan Love in this regular season, and I think we will get our first real glimpse of, okay, he can play in this league, and it's happening, and we're going to get uh, a glance at what that could potentially look like with the number ones. And I don't know who it'll be against. Maybe it'll be against the Cowboys. How full circle would that be? Uh, the Cowboys on primetime, Mike McCarthy, and you know, all, all of a sudden, uh, Jordan Love comes in and makes his, his presence known. So I will say that Jordan Love has his Aaron Rodgers moment this year. I'm doubling down on it. Like I said, I had it a season ago. I did hedge a little bit last year and say it's more like he just gets his opportunity, uh, which he did. He got his opportunity against the Chiefs and then kind of again against the Lions. Did not look like Aaron Rodgers did when he played in that first game against the Cowboys, but uh, I'm going to say that he has that moment this year and we get a, a real good look at what that could potentially look like. Number four, Romeo Dobbs leads the team in receiving yards. I don't know that he'll ultimately lead the team in receptions. I don't know that he'll lead the you know the team in touchdowns, but I'm going to say that he leads the Packers in receiving yards this year. I just think all, already Alan Lazard's got an injury issue. We don't know if he's going to be ready to play week one. And I do think that, well, Lazard maybe ends up with the most catches. I think Watkins and Cobb both have a, a limited ceiling as to what they can ultimately be in this Packers offense. They've both fought injury issues in the past. And I just think at some point, 
Matt LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers are going to realize that they need some explosivity. They can't just go with Cobb and Watkins and Lazard. They need some players who can stretch the field. I think Dobbs will get the first crack at that. I think he's going to make the most of it. And I think sooner rather than later, Dobbs becomes maybe the de facto number one. Let's let's make no mistake here. If you combine all the Packers wide receivers not named Romeo Dobbs in the big plays that they made in mini camps, OTAs, training camps, etc., I'm not sure it equals the big plays that Romeo Dobbs had in camp. And at some point, you just have to get the ball to your guy that can make plays, and that's Romeo Dobbs. Now, this could go in a variety of different directions because Dobbs' blocking has been subpar, which we know how important that is. His you know, preciseness and, and precision on his routes has not always been there. And you know, just some of the small, finer details of playing wide receiver, he still has a ways to go to become a professional in this league. So if all of a sudden his blocking and his attention to detail and his route running suffer, and he doesn't display that effort down in and down out, he could find himself in the hot seat and maybe Christian Watson or maybe an Amari Rogers, Samari Toure gets those opportunities instead. But I do think that Dobbs has that special potential to him. I think he's going to make the most of every opportunity. And I do think he ultimately leads the Packers in receiving yards this year, mostly due to some of that big play ability and the explosiveness that he can provide to the offense. Number five, I'm going to say that Darnell Savage has a major bounce back year, ends the season with at least five interceptions and becomes a, you know, I don't like a Pro Bowl alternate. I'll say, I don't think he's going to be like a pro, like a first team Pro Bowl or a first team all pro or anything like that, but I think he'll get named as a Pro Bowl alternate and really starts to play some solid football and starts realizing the potential that Green Bay thought he had coming out as a first round pick. First year as a rookie, showed flashes, had ups and downs. Second year, I thought had a really good season. Third year, I thought had a poor season to really poor season. I think he bounces back in a major way, maybe even leads the team in interceptions. I think he'll be a more sure tackler. I think he'll feel more comfortable in this Joe Barry defense in his second season. Uh, And again, I think it's going to be a major bounce back for Darnell Savage this year. Number six, always a little bit of a sad one, but I'm going to say that Preston Smith, Mason Crosby, Mercedes Lewis, Randall Cobb, Aaron Jones, and Dean Lowry. Those six all play their last games as Green Bay Packers this upcoming season. For Preston Smith, I think it's going to just be more contract related. I think Mason Crosby, I'm going to say he retires after this year. Same thing with Mercedes Lewis. I'm actually going to say same thing with Randall Cobb. I think Aaron Jones, just the emergence of A.J. Dillon. I think Kylan Hill and maybe even Tyler Goodson will show that they're capable NFL running backs, which will ultimately make Jones and his contract expendable. And then Dean Lowry, again, last year of his deal, I think they'll go in a different direction there. If Jerron Reed has a breakout, spoiler, that's going to be my next one. I think they'll try to get him back. TJ Slayton, Devontae Wyatt, Jonathan Ford, and of course, Kenny Clark. I just don't think they're going to have the need for Dean Lowry. So Preston, Crosby, Mercedes, Randall Cobb, Aaron Jones, Dean Lowry all play their last games as Green Bay Packers this upcoming season. Notice Adrian Amos, who has an interesting contract situation, and Aaron Rodgers, who always will be in consideration as his last year of a Packer, not on that list. I think they will find a way to get those two back in green and gold this upcoming season. Or In Rodgers' case, he just decides to play another season. Number seven, as spoiled previously, Jerron Reed will will be the biggest breakout Packer this season. I was tempted to say he will be this year's Devondre Campbell. That would be putting first-team All-Pro expectations on him, which I don't think is reasonable. I don't think he has a Pro Bowl season. I don't think he has a All-Pro season, but I do think that this will be Jerron Reed's best season as a pro. I think him playing next to Kenny Clark, Dean Lowry, TJ Slayton in this defensive line with Rashawn Gary, Preston Smith at the edges, Devondre Campbell, Coy Walker at inside linebacker. I think Reed is set up perfectly. He was a terror at times in training camp. Now, there is a little bit of uh, angst here for me because Jerron Reed was one of those like, I wouldn't say he was the MVP of training camp, but he was definitely one of those standout stars of training camp, which just always seems to be the kiss of death. And then, so like everyone in the media is being like how great Jerron Reed is in camp. And then, you know, usually it's like he goes out has a very mediocre to below average regular season. And everyone's like, why was everyone talking about Jerron Reed in training camp? Because he was freaking awesome. That's why. And you can't predict these things sometimes. But 
I do think he's going to have his best season as a pro and really be one of the breakout Packers this year. Uh, I think he's going to be a good run defender. I think he's going to get pressure on the quarterback. And I think he's going to really set himself up for a big payday following this season. You get those players that get sort of that one-year prove-it deal. He got a, a decent deal um, overall, a little bit more than Campbell did a season ago. But we saw how much that deal uh, meant to Campbell of him getting a real opportunity and a one-year deal. And knowing that if he had a monster season, he'd get a big contract, which he did. And I think we saw it basically with Rizul Douglas. I think Jerron Reed's going to be a version of that, knowing that he's set up in a really good position with a team that can compete for a Super Bowl with really good players surrounding him. And he knows that if he has a big season, he'll get a major payday from either the Packers or some other team this offseason. I think he's going to live up to it. I think he's going to have a really big year and be the Packers' biggest breakout player this upcoming season. Number eight, maybe this isn't a bold prediction, but with you know, Devontae Adams gone and, you know, these new wide receivers coming in, a lot of rookies on the team, offensive line a little bit in flux. The offense, I think, is expected to maybe be a little bit worse, if not maybe significantly worse than a season ago. But I'm going to go out and say Aaron Rodgers will still be in the top three in MVP voting. Now, like I said, maybe that's not that bold if you're saying that the the back to back MVP is in number you know in, in the top three in MVP voting. Okay, that, again, not bold probably overall, but we know Justin Herbert, you know Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, and like there's a lot of really good quarterbacks that could go and win this. Joe Burrow, like there there's going to be a lot of players in the conversation for MVP this season. So it is no shoe in or guarantee for anyone any year to be in that conversation. But I do think Rodgers will finish in the top three in MVP voting once again. And it wouldn't shock me if he ultimately won it, especially with no Devontae Adams. I do think voters are going to have a little bit of voter fatigue of voting him three times in a row, which could play a, a factor in this. But I definitely think he finishes in the top three. Number nine, the rookies. I'm going to say Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Zach Tom, Devontae Wyatt, Quay Walker, and Kingsley and Igbari, JJ and Igbari, whichever you want to go by. Uh, all six of them end up starting games for the Packers this upcoming season, which may not seem like that big of a prediction to begin with. But remember, only Quay Walker right now of those six is projected to be a starter opening weekend. So uh, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs behind the, the three veterans right now. Zach Tom seems to be sort of a backup everywhere, but uh, not starting to begin with. And even if you know, once everyone's healthy, even if Royce Newman goes down, I think Jake Hansen might be the next guy up right now, but I think Tom will get there. I think Wyatt, either due to him playing better at the end of the year, or just sort of injuries as the the you know course of the season progresses, I think he'll get starts at some point. Same thing with Enig Barre. I bet at some point, either Preston Smith or Rashawn Gary probably miss some time. I think Enig Barre might be the guy that ultimately gets the start in that situation. So I think six rookies at some point will start. And then of course, uh, Jack Coco will be the you know starting long snapper. I don't know if you can be a starter at long snapper, but if so, that would make seven rookies that are starting in some capacity this season. So that will be my prediction there. Number 10, I'm going to say that the Packers clinched the NFC North by Christmas. So Christmas day, the Packers play at the Dolphins. I don't know if they will actually clinch it that day by beating the Dolphins or if just all of the rest of the teams uh, in the NFC North are losing that much by that date. And ultimately the Packers uh, clinch the North by that date. But I do not expect the North to be that good. I expect the Bears to be a bottom three team in football. I think the Lions will be improved, but I still think they're somewhere in that, you know, I don't know, eight and nine to seven and 10 range. I think somewhere in there. And I think the Vikings come back to earth as well. I think they're just trying to hang on uh, to a team that's not going to compete. Um, and I think ultimately that's going to cost them. I think they should have tried for more of a rebuild. And instead they tried to keep a Kirk Cousins team together for reasons. So I think they end up in that, you know, nine and eight, eight and nine range as well. Like I said, I think the Packers will clinch the NFC North by Christmas Day weekend. And then uh, number 11, I don't know why, I don't know how, I don't know if it's good, I don't know if it's bad, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say Keyshawn Nixon will play a major role this upcoming season. Right now, he is the Packers' sixth defensive back. So, and I mean that totally. So if Darnell Savage, Adrian Amos, Jair Alexander, you know, Razul Douglas or Eric Stokes, if any of them go out, Keyshawn Nixon will be the next guy up. Now at safety, that will if it's a safety that goes out, Amos or Savage, I believe that 
Razul Douglas will move to safety in that situation, and Nixon will be the nickel corner uh, in the slot corner in that situation. So either way, I expect Nixon to be DB number six, and there's just going to be you know DB injuries at some point this season that is going to force him to play. I think he will have a very Chandon Sullivan-esque uh, role in, in the slot. I think he can play that type of game. And I think he can actually be better than Sullivan, but whether it's playoff time and he comes up with a big interception or it's playoff time and he allows a big play, I think he's going to have a major role on special teams. And just some gut feeling of mine is that Keyshawn Nixon at some point this year, going to play a major role, good, bad, ugly, and different. I don't know yet, but Keyshawn Nixon will play a major role on the team this upcoming season. And last but not least, Packers record. I'm going to uh, predict that the Packers go 11 and 6. They don't quite get to that 13 wins. I think there's going to be some pain points, especially as this offense tries to sort of figure out their identity. I think this overall team tries to figure out how they win as a more defensive oriented team. I think there's going to be some hiccups. I think there's going to be a feeling out process. They've got some really long road trips. Of course, they've got the home game that's overseas and then they have to come back and play the very next week. I just think there's some wonkiness with the schedule. I think they've got some very tough opponents. Uh, the Bills on the road, they've got the Rams. I think the Eagles on the road is going to be a pretty tough opponent. So uh, Buccaneers on the road, there's going to be some tough games there. So I'm going to say 11 and six, but I'm going to say that the Packers make the Super Bowl due to their defense. I think they're going to get hot at the right time and actually figure out how to play a playoff brand of football. Something that while they've been a good regular season team, they have not been a good postseason team. I think they figure out that out this year, whether or not they win the Super Bowl, I don't know. That's a bold prediction I'm not ready to make yet, but I do think they make it there and then we'll make that prediction uh, come Super Bowl time when they actually make it. And we got a couple weeks to discuss that when the time comes. So those are my bold predictions. I'll recap them really quick. Bakhtiari starts every game. Packers special teams finishes somewhere between 20 and 29. Jordan Love has his Aaron Rodgers Cowboys moment. Romeo Dobbs leads the team in receiving yards. Darnell Savage has a bounce back year and ends the season with five plus interceptions. Preston Smith, Mason Crosby, Mercedes Lewis, Randall Cobb, Aaron Jones, and Dean Lowry play their last games as Green Bay Packers. Jerron Reed is the biggest breakout Packer. Rogers finishes top three in MVP voting. Aaron, not Amari. Uh, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Zach Tom, Devontae Wyatt, Quay Walker, and Kingsley J.J. Inigbari will all start games this year. Packers will clinch the NFC North uh, by Christmas Day weekend. Keyshawn Nixon will play a major role this season, and the Packers will go 11-6 and six and make the Super Bowl due to their defense. That is going to do it for me today. Stay tuned for some major announcements in the coming days regarding the Pack-A-Day podcast. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, but until next time, and as always, Go Pack Go!